Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I have just graduated from NYU with a computer science degree and today I'm gonna go through all the classes that I took and my experiences. Um, I'm gonna go through the classes that I took in computer science, not all the all classes. Um, and my experiences uh, so that maybe you can learn from if you are just starting uh, computer science degree or you are planning to study computer science you may get an idea of what it looks like if you are uh, if you got accepted to NYU congratulations um, this might help you pick classes um, so here we start here we go so first semester fall 2020 COVID terrible year um, overall but I took um, my so I started as an economics major and I took my first um, class that could be that can be counted for CS computer science requirement that is math for econ one which is basically the same as calculus um, calc one it was it was an alright class I think calculus is a pretty standard uh, there's a pretty standard way of education for calculus so it was a pretty standard class Next up, uh, my second semester, I took Introduction to Programming. So that was my first actual programming course at NYU. Before that, I took a little bit of programming uh, I, in high school. But this was, I thought, okay, let me get the fundamentals strong, you know. Um, so let me take this course. Um, it turned out, it was a lot of stuff I already knew. But anyways, I had fun. I had um, the class was structured in a way that we would learn some concepts and we would have assignments uh, after that. And the assignments would be kind of like mini coding puzzles. I found that fun. I found that process of trying to come up with a solution, try implement it. Um, it doesn't work out. See why it doesn't work out. And then like finally through that iteration, get to the, the correct uh, result like that. I found that uh, very entertaining, to be honest. So I decided to, with more reasons as well, but I decided to make computer science my major and econ uh, my minor, actually, after that class. So the second um, computer science class I took, uh, so this is my sophomore year now, is Introduction to Computer Science. The thing with this class is that a lot of the like 70% of this class was almost exactly the same as introduction to programming in the intro to computer science we did everything in Java and then intro to programming we did everything in Python but there isn't that big of a difference um, in terms of the content the concepts are the same for the most part so a lot of things that we did in this class to me they felt a little bit redundant um, the last 30% of this class was actually useful. Um, but then, since we spent so much time relearning the stuff that we already learned in terms of the programming, that I, did, I don't think we had enough time for that last 30% that was actually adding on top of it. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I think it was fine. Um, moving on to my second semester of my sophomore year, I took two CS classes. One is discrete math. Discrete math was very different than, than any math class I took before in high school and in college. Um, discrete math is a little, it's like, so normally all the math classes I took before, it's like you learn something, you learn like a method of, you know, a way of doing stuff. And then you are given a problem set and you try to solve that problem set, right? Um, discrete math was more like, not about like solving problem set. It was more about understanding the logic behind all of these like methods that you would learn, uh, you had learned previously and like applying that and like coming up with proofs of why these things work. Like when we take, let's say uh, the, the in, like when we um, take the differential of something, what does that actually mean? Um, can you explain that like in English actually? Um, so that, I actually had a lot of fun. It was, in my opinion, I had more fun in that, in that class than all the other math classes I've taken before because it was such a different concept. Um, yeah, 
The other class uh, is a very foundational class for computer science, is data structures. Um, this was the first, like, you know, the, like the really challenging computer science class that I took. Um, I think it depends on the professor that you take it with, but with my professor, it was quite a bit of challenge. But that's a good way because that's, I learned a lot in that class. And then since this is such a foundational course that it set me up well for the rest of my uh, computer science education. But I've also seen a lot of people that are not serious about uh, doing CS, you know, drop that class or like, you know, choose a different major because like if you're somebody that is like, I don't really want to do CS, but you know, I might as well do it because it's, you know, it's better than, you know, not knowing, not, not knowing how to program. Like if you're in that mindset, then a lot of people who were in that mindset thought that like the amount of effort they put in doesn't really correlate with the, with how much they actually want to be a computer science major. So they just dropped it. Um, but I think it's a very, very important course overall. And then next semester, uh, my, um, uh, my junior year now, I took computer systems organization, which uh, computer systems organization was like, um, not a very hard class, but that also depends on your professor. With my professor, it wasn't very hard. It wasn't hard like data structures. Uh, but it was very useful. So in computer systems organization, you actually get to know what goes under the hood, uh, what goes inside the machine when you actually write a program. Um, like, you know, we all say it's all ones and zeros, but what does it actually mean? What does, how does the machine take those, take the program that you wrote in, convert it to ones and zeros, and then like execute that. So you learn about what happens. So that's, that was a really like eye-opening class uh, for me and that was the class that you write uh, we first wrote programs in C which I think is very important for a computer science major but we also wrote programs in assembly which is also very important because then you understand uh, you have a, you get a better understanding of what the machine uh, understands when you write a program another class was called basic algorithms now this was kind of like continuation of data structures and discrete math um, because you use data structures to solve algorithm, like come up with algorithms or like solve algorithmic questions. Um, but then you have to prove them using the concepts that you learn in discrete math. Um, I don't know who called this basic, um, but this was the, by far the hardest class I've taken at NYU. So before this class, I wasn't the kind of student that would go into like office hours, you know, consistently, um, I wouldn't go to office hours like I would go to maybe like once per semester or something. With this class, everything changed because the only way I could do the homeworks was to go to office hours, discuss it with my friends and the TA and the professor, and then maybe I could get a sense of what the problem is and how can I like approach it. Um, so I had to go to every office hour for that class. And that was the only way I could pass. That was like a very, very hard class. Um, in my opinion. And uh, next semester, uh, so uh, spring 2023, I took operating systems. So this was basically, I think, in my mind, it was kind of like a continuation of computer systems organization because we were still close to the machine level. Like we um, did a lot of projects that would like simulate what an operating system does. Like we wrote um, like a file encoder or we wrote like our own shell, um, which was a lot of fun. You get a lot of experience using C. Um, so in, let's say like computer systems organization, you get an introduction to C and you get introduction to concepts, but operating systems was the class that we actually applied a lot of those things. So I think that was very useful. It was a very hands-on class. And then I took my first CS elective, which is applied internet technologies which is basically a web development class. We did a lot of like web development projects back to back to back to back. We did, we first did like a vanilla JavaScript HTML CSS project. Then we used Express, then we used like React. And you know, we just used a bunch of different like web development technologies, um, very hands-on, but I learned a lot and I think it's useful. Um, 
The other class I took was linear algebra. This actually is not a requirement at NYU. It's a requirement in many other computer science curriculums, but I think it's a very important class and it's a requirement for a lot of other electives that are super interesting for like computer graphics or you know artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of that stuff. So in fall, so my senior year now, I took algorithmic problem solving. This was the class that you would apply the algorithms that you learn in like basic algo, like algorithms and data structures, and you would try to solve competitive programming questions. It was basically a competitive programming or like lead code type of class. Um, very, very useful because in basic algorithms, although like you learn a lot, but, but you end up like solving those algorithms on paper and like pro making proofs on paper. Whereas in algorithmic problem solving, you actually implement it using like C++ or Java, depending on your preference. Um, and then you try to implement them and you have a, like a time limit. It's basically like competitive programming or like it's basically like lead code problems. And before that class, I was actually very insecure about my like lead coding skills because I was like very slow. That class helped with that a lot. And I think it kind of helps with your data structures knowledge a lot, which is like super important. The other elective I took was computer graphics. Um, this was taught by Ken Perlin and he had a very different approach to teaching than I, what I was used to because the class structure was like very, very open-ended. Basically we didn't have any exams. Uh, all the only like, thing that we had was like weekly assignments and assignments didn't have like a rubric or like a very like strict guidelines. It was basically like this week you learn this technique and you know, make something fun with it, make something that looks nice or, you know, go have fun, go create something that is interesting to you. It was very fun. And every week, like he would, uh, display our projects on screen and give like feedback, um, which also helped too, because like you don't want your project to be displayed and you know it's obvious that that you didn't put any effort in um so you want to like make something nice but you can do whatever you want basically as long as you use the techniques that you learn in the class that way like it you kind of like preserve your like curiosity towards the subject and you do it because uh, like you you put the extra effort in because you want to not because like oh you have to do this to get this straight and you have to do this to get this great and you know Da, 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 like not not like that so uh, to me it was a lot of fun uh it's basically so computer graphics is basically like using math to draw images i think in essence it's it's kind of like that it's nice it's a very creative class as well um, and i'm personally interested in game development so it was very useful for me as well um and my last semester at NYU, I took three uh, CS electives. The first is software engineering. So we form groups and in groups of like four or five or three, you make like five software projects. And then you have to use like best practices that are used in the industry. We had to have a good like source control um, Git, obviously. Um, uh, we, ha we had to use Git and then we had to or make create issues on github and then make pull requests and someone had to review the pull request um and then uh for some projects we had to deploy uh using docker containers for some projects we had to have like an 80 percent test coverage um and then we would have like automatic github actions that would um that would run our tests every time we make a pull request to the um to the main branch like if all of these things sound like very confusing to you and you have no idea what you mean this is the class you actually learn a lot about that stuff and that that really prepares you for the industry uh because uh working software engineering they all know this stuff they're like very familiar with this stuff so it, i think like saves you a lot of time in your career and um actually you like teaches you the things that are actually useful from the first day at your job um the other class I took was open source software development. This was actually very useful as well. Um, this class had two parts. One was more like, uh, more like philosophical, like the ideas about open source. But the other part was 
we would actually basically form groups and try to contribute to open source projects. And that was very nice because um, that was a, like, until that time, I didn't have any like school related project that was like, that included more than like four or five people. This was the first time I was like contributing to massive, massive projects, like with large, large uh, code bases, which is a very different experience than like doing a project with your friends, you know, or like by yourself. So it's, uh, it, it was a very good experience, uh, very good. It, it teaches you a lot about how to communicate with the, with the community that you're interacting with as well. Um, was very useful overall. And then the last uh, elective that I took was parallel computing. This was also um, very nice. It's basically uh, writing code that would, you know, utilize multiple multiple processors at the same time, uh, multiple cores or maybe like multiple different computers. And I think that's super important because if you want to write, especially since I'm interested in game dev, if you want to write performant code, if you want to use hardware to its capacity, I mean, you need to use more than one core. Um, like it's, uh, if you don't know how to utilize all the other cores, which require a lot, quite a bit of additional learning actually, um, then all the code that you written is like sequential, which only runs in like one, one of the cores. Uh, but like all the computers nowadays, they all have you know, multiple cores, like four, eight, 16, whatever. Um, and then they have GPUs, which have like, you know, thousands of cores. And then if you, especially for graphics and game dev, you have to utilize the GPU as well. So I think all of that stuff is very important. I kind of wish that I was introduced to this topic earlier in my CSO. We did a lot of, a little bit of multi-threading in operating systems. Um, but this was a course that I actually understood uh, at least like the concepts uh, about parallel parallel computing. So that was my CS education. I think I'm pretty happy with it overall. Um, I'll, I'm yet to see uh, how NYU computer science major has prepared me for the rest of my um, career as a software engineer or a computer scientist. Um, we'll see, hopefully it'll be good. Thank you for listening. See you next time.